Hello, board game brothers and sisters, and welcome to another episode where I'll be letting you know of Kickstarter's launching this week. If you like this sort of content, definitely go ahead and check out Board Game Co.'s channel because he'll be putting out a similar video to this very soon, but covering Kickstarter's launching in the next 30 days. And I'll leave a link to that channel right up here. And if you want even more great content, go ahead and check out Brian at Game Brigade because he puts out reviews, previews, playthroughs, and has conversations about all your favorite board games. But what I really wanted to focus on here is he just started putting out a new series where he goes over Kickstarter games each week, but focuses on a select few games that he's most excited about. So I think that's a great compliment to my series. So if you like this sort of content, I think you'll like his as well. And I've also talked to him a few times in the past, and he's a really great guy. So definitely check out his channel and show him some love. Love. And one last thing before we get started is that I wanted to do a little giveaway for hitting 500 members over on the Discord, and I had asked all of you to give me ideas of what you think would be a good giveaway for hitting this milestone, and I took all those ideas, put them into a list, and then I had a little vote over on the Discord. And the winning idea is to do a little giveaway for $100 credit over on kickstartedgames.com, which is the sponsor of this channel. And I'm still going to have to do a little bit of work to get this all sorted out, but I'll do this announcement more officially next week, and I'll let you know all the details for that and how you can get entered into that giveaway. But I know giveaways now are better than giveaways later, so make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video because we do Kickstarter pledge giveaways almost every week, and we got a couple to announce this week as well. And I do have a pretty awesome announcement to make about kickstartedgames.com, and that's that they set up a really nice coupon code for the channel. So if you go ahead and make an order over at kickstartedgames.com, make sure to enter Shelf Clutter into the discount code, and that'll get you a whopping 15% off your entire cart which is a really nice discount, so if there's a game you're looking to get on your shelf, go ahead and check out kickstartergames.com, use this gift code, and save some money. I also want to say that any sales made here do help support the channel as well, and I really appreciate that. And with that said, let's check out the Kickstarters. And the first one we have launches on March 29th, and it's V Commandos Ghost. And this is an expansion for the game V Commandos, which plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 30 to 120 minutes to play. And V Commandos is a World War II cooperative board game where the player's goal is to complete pre-generated missions, or the players can create custom missions by combining objective cards together. And the missions in V Commandos are all about stealth, so you're going to be sneaking into enemy territories and trying to take out your enemies silently. And you can also do different things like set traps or even disguise yourself in an enemy's uniform. There's a lot of different actions you can take and the different missions are going to give you some different opportunities to interact with the enemies and the environment. And if you do happen to make some noise and get caught, feel free to open fire, but try to get those alarms shut off again so you can go back into hiding. And although this campaign is for the Ghost expansion, it's also going to offer all previous content as well. And the new expansion is going to come with some new operations, but it's also going to include all the Kickstarter exclusives from previous campaigns as well. This expansion is going to introduce three new game modes. First, there's going to be the XP mode, where every time you complete an objective, you're going to gain XP in the form of an ability card. You can assign that card to any one of your commandos and beef them up so that they gain new abilities as the game continues. You just want to try to keep them alive, because if they ever die, then you lose that ability tied to that commando. And then there's also the lone wolf solo mode where you can play as a single commando against an entire platoon and you can also play this with the XP cards. And then finally there's the campaign mode which is created by chaining different operations together for players to complete. This campaign is also going to be offering a deluxified miniatures upgrade pack for the core game and for all the expansions and this is also going to come with brand new artwork for all the commando cards so that those cards more closely match the miniatures. And one thing I really like about this publisher is that every time they've released a version of this game they've taken feedback from the community and then use that to help improve the rulebook. So you can be confident that you're going to be getting a very polished rulebook and I just like anything that helps get a game to the table easier. This game also has a ton of positive feedback from different reviewers and content creators so I think it's one to be excited about and one that I'm really looking forward to checking out. And the next few games we have are launching on March 30th and the first one we have is Longshot the Dice Game and this plays 1-8 to eight players and takes about 20-30 to 30 minutes to play. And this is a lighthearted push your luck dice game with some really fun artwork. And in this game you're going to be buying different horses, placing bets on horses, and using some special abilities to influence race movement and perform some other actions throughout the game. Rolling the dice is going to determine which horses move and the options that are available on a turn. Once three horses cross the finish line, earnings are totaled, and the player with the most money at the end of the game wins the game. And the next campaign we have is Vigilante, and this plays 3-5 to five players and takes about 45-120 to 120 minutes to play. 
and this is a game where players are going to be building up a team of heroes in order to take out villains. This is a semi-cooperative game with hidden alignments, and depending on your alignment, you're going to have some different objectives to win the game. Players can either be good, evil, or neutral. If you're good, you're going to want to be taking out a certain number of villains depending on player count. And if you're evil, your objective is to just prevent the good players from reaching their goal before the end of the game. And if you're neutral, then you have your own unique win condition and you can actually win with any other players. But you may be interfering with their goals and adding chaos throughout the game. In this game, players are going to be choosing a scenario and performing different actions to recruit heroes, fight villains, heal their heroes, and draw new item cards to help them along the way. At the end of each round, all players are going to roll a set of dice in secret behind their player shield, and then they're going to choose one die to add to the event track. New events will get added throughout the game, adding some new options, and since this is a hidden identity game, it's going to be up to the players to try and figure out which other players are working with them or working against them. And the next campaign is one that I wasn't expecting to be so interested in, but now it's caught my attention, and this one's called John Company 2nd Edition, and it plays 1-6 to six players and takes about 90 to 240 minutes to play. And this is designed by Cole Worley, who also designed games like Pax Premier, Oath, and Root. And I did take a look at the forums, and it looks like they are going to be offering Pax Premier 2nd Edition in this campaign, so if you missed out on that in the past, this might be a good chance to get your hands on that. So the title of this campaign is a little bit misleading because even though it is a second edition, this is going to be very different from the original game and it's going to have some extensive revisions. And in this game, players assume the roles of ambitious families attempting to use the British East India Company, otherwise known as the John Company, for their own personal gain. And this corporation actually has a very interesting history. It originally formed in order to facilitate trade in the Indian Ocean, but it later seized control of large parts of the Indian subcontinent and colonized parts of Southeast Asia. Asia and Hong Kong. This company rose to account for half the world's trade and eventually ruled large areas of India accessing military and administrative power before there was a revolution and the company eventually collapsed. And in this game, players are going to be building up their reputation, securing positions of power, and guiding the company in different directions for their own personal gain. Something that's interesting about this game is a lot of the goals that you're going to be trying to achieve, you won't be able to fulfill on your own. So you're going to have to negotiate with other players, borrow and lend money in order to achieve your goals. One thing to note about this game is that it does take its historic theme very seriously, and that theme might wrestle with a few concepts that may not be suitable for all players. But if you do have an interest in history and learning about some of the struggles this world had to go through in the past, definitely check this one out. And the next campaign is called Lasting Tales, and this plays 1-5 to five players and takes about 45 to 120 minutes to play. And this is a miniatures game inspired by role-playing games like D&D. And in this game, players are going to create their own heroes and embark on an epic campaign linking game sessions together to create a story set in a classic fantasy world. And this campaign is going to be a little bit different than the other ones because it's primarily offering a book. And this book is going to contain all the rules to play the game, including scenarios, a full narrative campaign, enemy profiles, hero creation, as well as pre-made heroes to get new players right into the action. To play this game, you'll just need a handful of standard six-sided die, a ruler, and some miniatures. And this game is actually miniature agnostic, which means that you can just use any fantasy miniatures that you already own, but they will provide options for official minis and terrain as well for you to check out during the campaign. If a cooperative tabletop miniature game inspired by classic role-playing games sounds interesting to you, definitely go ahead and check this one out. I have all the links to all these campaigns in the description below. And the next campaign is Poetic License, and this plays 3-5 to five players and takes about 15-30 to 30 minutes to play. And this is a party game where players are going to be drafting different words in order to craft poems. Players are going to be writing three lines limited to five syllables on the first line, seven syllables on the second, and five syllables on the third line. You'll be drafting words and putting them into your three lines throughout the game, but some alterations can be made by using some special abilities. After all players have completed their poems, they will each read their own poem and vote for the one that they think is the best. The player that wins the most points at the end of two rounds wins the game. And the next campaign we have is Sentinels of the Multiverse, and this plays 2-5 to five players and takes about 30-60 to 60 minutes to play. And this one's actually going to be our Discord Pick of the Week. Every week, members from the Discord community go ahead and vote on the campaigns that they're most excited about. So if you want to get in on next week's vote, be sure to check out the Discord. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And this game is a cooperative fixed deck card game where players are comic book heroes, and they're going to be fighting against one of four villains in one of four dynamic environments. 
Each player is going to have their own deck of cards depending on the character that they're going to be playing as, and they're going to be playing those cards to fight against the villain and the environment decks. On a player's turn, they can play a card from their hand, they can use an ability from one of their cards currently in play, and they can draw a card from their deck. Each round starts with the villain's turn, and then all players get a turn, and then the round concludes with the environment deck. For the villain and the environment, the top card from their deck gets put into play, which represents their turn. Play continues like this until the villain is brought down to zero health, or until the villain has succeeded in their objective, or brought all the heroes down to zero health. Each villain, hero, and environment deck all play differently, so expect a lot of different permutations and replayability with this game. And the next campaign we have is Inventor Gadgets, and this plays 3 to 8 players and takes about 25 to 55 minutes to play. And this is a party game where you're going to be combining different cards in order to create inventions. You're going to be pitching your invention to the group in the hopes that it will advance to the next round. Each round you can play as the inventor, the buyer, or the marketing agent, and you're going to want to contribute additional functionality, a slogan, or a catchphrase in order to add more contribution to the invention and award you more royalty money. The player who has the most money at the end of the game wins. And the last campaign I have on the 30th is Magna Roma, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 30-45 to 45 minutes to play. And this is a tile placement game where players are going to be building a Roman city. Players are going to be competing to place tiles to match symbols on connecting tiles to generate different resources. Players will be generating coins, legion, and population, and players will be using these resources in order to play other actions throughout the game. And completing these different actions will grant you points for the end of the game, and some of these actions could be building different monuments like the one you see here, and this allows you to put down this really cool miniature tile. And you could also do other things like gaining luxury goods, gaining God's favor tiles, or conquering different provinces. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. And the next couple games are launching on the 31st, and the first one we have is Soul Raiders, and this plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 2-4 to four hours to play. And this is coming from the designer Mark Andre, who also designed Splendor, which is probably a game that you've heard of. But Soul Raiders is a cooperative story-driven game where players are trying to become powerful warrior mages in order to fight back against evil that's trying to overcome the world. This game plays over a series of chapters. Each chapter takes players through a different setting with its own story deck and its own set of objectives to discover. Players are going to be trying to locate different stars within the deck and they're going to be trying to gather these stars before the threat level gets too high or before time runs out. These stars are going to be hidden in some different locations but can be collected in any order. Players are going to be using different actions along with the deck to search for knowledge of where to find these different stars. Players are going to be uncovering the main plot while also discovering some hidden side missions along the way. This game does come with some really nice artwork as well as some really nice miniatures to go along with it. If players can complete their objectives before the time runs out, they win the game. And the next campaign we have is Rise of the Gnomes, and this plays 1-5 to five players and takes about 60 to 150 minutes to play. And this is a worker placement area control game that's low in luck and high in player interaction. And this is the standalone sequel to the game Dragon Brew, which got a really nice rating of a 7.5 on Board Game Geek. And in this game you are building a brewery, collecting ingredients, and brewing specialty beers to win points from the judges. Rise of the Gnomes is going to play quite a bit different than that as players are going to be choosing one of 30 races with their own unique abilities and then players are going to be trying to manage their own brewery empire to win loyalty of their customers and earn points by expanding their customer base, building breweries, brewing beer, recruiting allies, and pleasing the judges. Players are going to be getting in each other's way trying to occupy and gain control of different areas of the map and I'm a player that really doesn't mind conflict in their games so that's probably one of the reasons that this one's going to be my pick of the week. But you won't just be fighting each other in this game because Rise of the Gnomes also features a Gnome Union faction which is a automated competing player in the game. And this faction has an adjustable difficulty depending on how much of an impact you want them to have in the game. But players will have to not only be competing against each other but also trying not to let the gnomes win. Because if the gnomes win then all the players are losers. But that's not all because a hungry dragon is going to emerge from the sea and try and eat your customers and burn down your breweries. Players are going to be assigning workers and drafting cards to dominate different regions of the maps, and this game can be played cooperatively, solo, competitively, or cutthroat. Playing cutthroat is going to increase the amount of interactivity in the game and also how much influence players have over the gnome faction. This game plays over five rounds with six phases on each round, and the game's been in development for the past few years and has some really nice comments over in the rating section.
This game does have quite a few layers to it, but I did take a look at the rules and it doesn't look like a game that's too hard to learn or teach. One thing about me is I really do like games with silly themes and this game has that. And I really like the juxtaposition that creates with the more cutthroat type of game that it is. This game does look like it's going to offer quite a lot of variability between plays with up to 30 different playable races, each with their own unique abilities. And there's also a lot of different action cards that are going to come out that are going to present some different actions for every game. If you want to learn more about this one, go ahead and check out the Kickstarter campaign page in the description below. And there's another campaign that I was expecting in March, but I never got an exact date for this one, so I'm not sure when exactly it will release, but that's Ravage Swamps of Delgore. And this is a dungeon crawl game for one to five players where you don't play as the heroes. Instead, you're playing as the orcs, goblins, and other nefarious creatures, and you're trying to win glory and take out different heroes and elites that wander through your land. I'm not going to get too into detail on campaigns that I don't have an exact date for. And now we're getting into campaigns starting in April, and the first one we have launches on April 1st, and it's called Planet Fulcrum, and it plays 1-4 to four players and takes about 45 to 90 minutes to play. And this is another area control game that features tech tree character development and also deck-driven battle. And in this game, players assume the roles of unwitting adventurers who are transported and stranded into a new land. The planet that they've been teleported to has granted them some powerful abilities, and players are going to be competing to unlock more of the planet's gifts that it has to offer. To master your newfound skills, you're going to have to bond with different regions of the planet and compete to control these regions and fight off competing players. With every action you make, the planet will deliver judgment on you and have a reaction based on that. Players will be gaining points by controlling different territories, leveling up their powers, and collecting different items. The game ends when every territory is controlled by a player, and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins the game. And a cool little feature with this game that I just discovered is you can head over to the website and create a character of your own with their little character creator that you can print off and use in the game. And the next campaign we have is launching on April 2nd and this is called Loop Life of Ordinary People and it plays 1-6 to six players and takes about 15-90 to 90 minutes to play. And this is a game where each turn players are going to choose to do one of three actions, work, buy, or consume. Each action will raise or decrease overall happiness and players will have different careers and abilities to choose from throughout the game. Players will be trying to maximize their happiness to win the game. I just want to take a second here and mention our sponsor, kickstartergames.com, where you can go ahead and get a really nice 15% off discount off of everything in your cart just by entering in the coupon code Shelf Clutter during checkout. Kickstartergames.com has a wide selection of games, so if there's a game that you've been hoping to add to your collection, definitely go check them out because a 15% discount is a good reason to finally get your hands on it. A small percentage of any purchases made there will come back and help this channel, so if you like this sort of content and you want to see more videos like this while still getting something nice for yourself, this is a really great option. Kickstartergames.com also buys games, so if you're looking to make some room on your shelf, they can help you with that as well. I also recommend subscribing to their newsletter because they do a giveaway every month and all you have to do is be subscribed to get entered into those. And I mentioned at the start of this video that we do have some pledge giveaways this week and the first one we have is Hit the Silk. And this is a game where players have all completed a heist, but the plane that they hijacked is going down. So to win this game, you need to find a parachute and survive the crash, and then also have enough cumulative loot between all the survivors to win the game. Players will be collecting different items and tools to help persuade or force the other players into helping them get a parachute. And you might even find yourself handcuffed to another player where both of you need a parachute in order to survive. I really like the theme for this one and the game looks like a lot of fun. And this giveaway is for the early flight pledge which comes with the core game and a plane miniature. And to enter this giveaway just leave a comment down below with the hashtag silk and let us know where you would fly as soon as it's safe to fly again. For me I definitely would love to just visit anywhere in Europe. I love the scenery, learning the different cultures and trying all the different food. Mostly the food. And the next giveaway we have is for Sephiroth, and this is a game for one to two players that can be played cooperatively or competitively. Depending on the way that you want to play the game, there's a different side of the board for that. And all the artwork in this game across the board and the tarot cards looks really amazing. This is a more relaxed game where players will be taking cards and playing cards while trying to climb up the board. Thematic to the tarot cards, this game is focused on exploring your inner self or your relationship with another person. And this giveaway is going to be for the Nine of Pentacles pledge, which comes with a deck of tarot cards as well as the digital game PDF. And all you have to do to enter this giveaway is head over to the Discord and check out the giveaways channel where I'll have a post where all you have to do is click a little emoji to get entered into the contest. That's all I have for you this week. Until next time, keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.